மறக்காம சர்பிரைஸ் பண்ணுங்க Thank you. To finish off this update, I'm going to show you um, three of the most recent games I could find, which have some relevance to the repertoire we're using. And the first of these was played in January 2011 in the Swedish team championship between Kesli Ong and Robert Bator, whose grade is 2-4-1-3. And it shows that in the uh, variation where Black plays D takes E5 and then C6, he can't just be blown away by brutal means. White plays his bishop out to c4, and black plays the recommended procedure, knight d7. Don't forget, black's idea in this line is, well, for the most part, to start off with, to challenge that advanced knight. That's white's most strongly placed piece. Get rid of it if you can. Ong decides to play knight takes d7 and then queen f3, but it's very unlikely that, that these brutal means are going to shake the uh, solid black position. The only question is, how does black handle an attack of this type? Well, Bator decides to go bishop e6, and when you see a black bishop appearing on e6 in this variation early, it generally means that uh, g6 will be the follow-up. There's the Kingis variation, um, back at knight takes e5, where black goes g6 straight away. That's also a very respectable way to play. Um, and the position we see here in this game, uh, well, really, it's very similar if it's not identical to lines which can occur after 5g6. So it's up to White to prove that he has something in this position. But the early simplification on d7 really has eased Black's task. And, um, well, if White plays any sort of normal move here, like c3, as he probably should, Black just castles with a perfectly adequate gain. One way that Black can seek to equalise in a situation like this, if he so desires, I mean, maybe Black doesn't need to play in this way, It's just to drop the knight back to, to c7. You needn't play like this, but you can. And uh, the logic of this is that further exchanges will certainly aid black. And then black's looking forward to playing a move like c5 at some point, when it's well prepared. And this will equalise the chances. White doesn't like, going back to the game, the thought that black might be equalising so e easily. So he goes in for rook takes e6, which is imaginative, but I don't think it's especially sound. And it's certainly not going to shake the ramparts of the, uh, the uh, International Masters Fortress, because black takes, and now you see what is white's follow-up. If he trains his sights on the e6 pawn with a move like queen e4, black plays queen b6. White simply can't get away with this when he's got all his queenside pieces undeveloped. I mean, that's what it boils down to. If White had all the pieces in the game, bishop g5, knight d2, rook e1, he was able to build up like that very quickly, then he might have some compensation. But here, queen takes e6, queen takes d4, just looks like a, a runaway win for black. The exchange up, uh, black's attacking the bishop, white's queenside is, is completely undeveloped. Uh, black is winning this position. So Ong decides, well, okay, I've sacrificed the exchange. It's going to be difficult for Black to coordinate his pieces, work around these double pawns. I'm just going to develop normally and see what happens. Well, imagine his surprise when Black just took this pawn cold-bloodedly on d4, um, challenging White to find compensation, it seems to me. And indeed, White doesn't have compensation. Ong builds up. Bator plays rook f8. Queen goes to h3. For an instant, it seems as though White's getting some compensation, <coughs> but knight f6 scotches all of White's ideas. Now I think black should be winning. Added to the problem of the pieces coming off the board, White also has a weak back rank and the f2 square to worry about. So bishop h6 was played. All right, well, I suppose White could have traded on, um, on f6. Rook takes f6. Now the weakness of f2 is extremely apparent. And if bishop e3 here, I think we can just take that off. Queen takes and go queen b6. Very easy defence here for black. And, uh, well, black may even cast on the queen side in the very near future. So that would be an easy win. Bishop h6, although it looks complicated, isn't especially complicated. Black takes on e4. Bishop takes f8. And now black plays a very, very good move. He brings his queen up to d6. He concentrates on counter-attack uh, rather than taking on f8. And I think this is the right way. Um, well, I suppose if black takes on f8, 
White can claim some sort of compensation after Queen takes e6. So um, Queen d6 stops all of White's threats. Ong play Queen takes h7. Black play King d7. Bishop g7. And now Bishop takes f2 check, launching the counterattack. King f1 was answered by Bishop c5. And Queen h4 was answered by Queen d2. A very strong move indeed, completely tying white up. The problem is, white's king is far more exposed than black's king. Rook e1 was answered by g5. A very strong deflection. The white queen needs to guard f2. She can't do this adequately anymore. White even gets to land a check, and then another check. But after king b6, it's the end of the game. So really cold-blooded play by battle all the way through. And, uh, well, Black's counterattack when it came was completely decisive. So going back to the opening, uh, the Black position can't really be shaken by Bishop c4. Knight d7 just looks like a good reply. Thank you.